Back in May 2015, David Hole took his metal detector and went looking for gold. He picked the perfect spot for it. Mayborough near Melbourne, Australia, was the top location down under during the gold rush in the 19th century. The detector beeped, showing there was something precious hiding in the ground. David found a very heavy reddish rock with a weird, dimpled surface resting in some yellow clay. As it turned out later, the find was indeed priceless, but only for science. David took the rock home, hoping he'd be able to open it and find a gold nugget inside. He tried a rock saw, an angle grinder, and a drill, and put the rock in acid. Nothing worked. Not even a sledgehammer did the job. A couple of years later, he decided to take the rock to Melbourne Museum and finally find out what it really was. It turned out it was a meteorite, and a rare one. The geologist working at the museum was over the moon, as after years of looking at thousands of rocks that people had thought to be meteorites, he finally got his hands on the real thing. The space origin of the rock explained why it was so unusually heavy. It contained dense forms of iron and nickel, and those guys weigh a lot. And it got its dimpled surface because it started melting when it plunged through Earth's atmosphere. Scientists named the meteorite Maribro after the place where it was found and used a diamond saw to study it better. They sliced off a sliver of the space rock and saw some tiny crystallized droplets of metallic minerals throughout it. Those minerals formed during the early years of our solar system. It means the space guest was around 4.6 billion years old. The researchers are still not quite sure where the meteorite came from or how long it's been on Earth, but they've got some guesses. Our solar system used to be a swirling mix of dust and chondrite rocks. Gravity did its thing and formed planets, but there were some leftovers, and most of them ended up in a massive asteroid belt. The Mabro meteorite likely took a detour from the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It got bumped out of there by asteroids crashing into each other. And one fine day, it decided to crash into Earth. Carbon dating says that this space rock has been chilling on Earth for somewhere between 100 and 1,000 years. There were meteorite sightings in the 19th century that could match up with when it made its grand entrance. The scientists say the Mabro meteorite is even rarer than gold. It's only the 17th meteorite ever found in the Australian state of Victoria and the second largest. In the 80s, David Mazurik from Michigan decided to buy a farm not far from Mount Pleasant. The new property came with a weird bonus, a large rock that kept the barn door open. The farmer explained the rock was a meteorite. It had literally fallen from the sky in the 30s. The farmer and his father found the crater the meteorite had left and dug out their guest from space, which was still warm. They couldn't think of a better use for it than to serve as a doorstop. I mean, what else can you do with a meteorite? The new owner got to keep the unconventional doorstop and must have grown fond of it. When he was moving to a new home, he took the rock with him and used it for the same purpose for another 30 years. Sometimes David will let his kids take it to school. It must have gotten some easy A's in physics and astronomy. Then, he heard that other Michigan residents find and sell pieces of meteorites for some serious cash. Since his piece was an impressive 22 pounds, he decided to take it to Central Michigan University to find out its value. A local geology professor was getting tired of similar requests because, for around 18 years, she had to explain to people all the rocks they had brought her weren't meteorites at all. But this time, she felt it was the real thing. She tested the rock and determined it was a meteorite made from iron and nickel. It turned out to be the sixth largest recorded find of this kind in Michigan, and the most valuable specimen she's ever worked with. They sent a slice for another round of verification to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C., and soon it was all official. It turned out that the meteorite was a piece of an early solar system. The Smithsonian and a museum in Maine offered some good money for the space rock. Mazurik decided to sell his meteorite to Michigan State University's Abrams Planetarium for $75,000.
he generously shared 10% of the money with Central Michigan University's Earth and Atmospheric Sciences Department, where they confirmed the rock's true identity. I hope the money he was left with was enough to buy a new doorstop. While some use meteorites as furniture, scientists have found a way to utilize them to extract oxygen from water on Mars. Traveling to the Red Planet is impossible without oxygen. We need it both to breathe and fuel rockets for a return trip to Earth. The new robot, called AI Chemist, hunts down a compound that can kickstart a chemical reaction on Mars to produce oxygen. The compound is crafted from elements found in Martian meteorites. This planet only has traces of oxygen in its atmosphere. But scientists have found there's some liquid water underneath the southern ice cap of Mars and more water under its surface. So they needed to figure out how to break down this water into its hydrogen and oxygen molecules using materials available on the Red Planet. The AI chemist analyzed five meteorites that either came from Mars or were similar to that of its surface. It used a laser to locate large amounts of iron, nickel, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, and manganese in the samples. These elements will be enough to produce more than 3.7 million possible molecules to break down water and generate oxygen on the Red Planet. Finding the right algorithm for this process would take us humans around 2,000 years, and the robot managed to do it in a matter of weeks. Using the meteorite compound as a catalyst, the robot managed to do its job in negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit on Earth. And it did so without any human help at all. Now, the question is, if it will be able to do the same on Mars, where the atmospheric composition, air density, humidity, gravity, and other conditions are trickier than on Earth. Other scientists previously managed to produce small amounts of oxygen fit for breathing up there. An instrument the size of a lunchbox on NASA's Perseverance rover compressed and heated carbon dioxide from Mars's atmosphere. It generated oxygen at around the same speed as a small tree. I think Matt Damon's character from The Martian would have loved all these advances in space science. Thousands of meteorites crash into our planet every year. 95% of them are thought to come from just two sources. 75% from the crust of a big asteroid, and 20% from the mantle of an even larger celestial body that bit the dust ages ago. But in May 2020, researchers stumbled upon some meteorite pieces in the Sahara Desert that were like nothing they'd seen before. They were labeled as ungrouped achondrites, a type of rock that formed from melted minor planets way back in the solar system's early days. This makes the find slightly older than Earth itself. But unlike others of its kind, this meteorite was made out of andesite, which made it even more unique. It could serve as proof that the early protoplanets in the solar system and a ton of other debris either got wrecked or joined forces in building the rocky planets we know today. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.